be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to this episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my partner and cohort in crime, Max Misano. Max, good morning, brother. How are you? Hi, Dennis. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Going pretty good, man. A beautiful sunny day in California. Same and, here. Uh, I think after we finish our little episode here today, uh, I'm going to run out and I might get in the spa this afternoon and just kind of enjoy. Getting ready for tomorrow, you know. Tomorrow is the finale for The Voice Ooh. on NBC. And I played The Voice this season as a contestant. As an, I downloaded the app. Sylvia encouraged me to do it. And dude, I have the three out of the four finalists in the finals tomorrow night. And I picked them on the very night that they auditioned. Nice. <laughs> and so if this was a horse race, I would be winning a trifecta right yeah, now. I was just going to say it's a trifecta. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty good, man. I am 889 in the national standings. And I consider that pretty good because right. they have 10 million viewers. <laughs> so... Yeah. I'll take anything <laughs> that close to the front. Heck but yeah. anyway, getting ready for that. Just uh, lots of things going on. Uh, business is coming back here in California. I'm so grateful for that. We're trying to get through the, uh, the awkwardness of getting back on the roll again. And uh, we have people, actually, we have people calling now. And it's, it's so nice. Yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. It is getting a great back feeling. to some. Some yeah. level of normalcy, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, staying busy, we're, you know, you and I, we're doing some programs online and uh, we've got our big live, uh, we're going live actually in salon programs starting in July. So I'm so excited about that. Thank you, Jesus. Right. And uh, we'll be able to be out there among our people, among our people. And I June 15th here in California, they're lifting the mask restriction. So... It, the world is kind of coming back to normal. Uh, I love it. <laughs> so how are things in the lake, at the lake, Every, on the lake? <laughs> everything is cool as a cucumber. And, yeah. You know, I just, just I, I imagine you sitting on your patio out there in the morning, having a nice cup of coffee, just contemplating life, listening to the sounds of nature. And uh, that makes it really great, man. It, it's that's basically accurate yeah it's you it's know? good on the soul you yes, know it really definitely purifies your soul we realize our place on earth and we don't live that crazy hectic life going from one thing to another i think for many of us our lives are changed as since this pandemic i mean it makes you stop and reevaluate the value of life it oh. makes you reevaluate the importance of your friends definitely and family you know you, you start to find yourself reaching out to people. Like I reached out to one of my other friends the other day and I hadn't talked to him since March of 2020. We'd had a couple of text messages, but no real on conversation. Right. And, um, I said, Hey, did you get your vaccination? And he goes, yeah, I'm getting mine today. I says, great. I got mine. <laughs> Can we do coffee? <laughs> we have some live interaction, please. Right. Right. So it's all good. It's all That's good. Right. And then, you know, seems like the uh, it's Groundhog Day on social media. <laughs> That's the one thing that doesn't stop <laughs> is the chatter oh. in all these hairdressing forums, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. And it's the it's typically the kind of the same topics that come up over and over again. It, it is. But it, it's funny, like I had a couple of posts that came up on my page that I had posted like last year or two years ago. And so I said, well, okay, I'm going to repost them because they, they were pretty good posts. Yeah. And I had people who actually had seen them for the first time, hadn't seen mm -hmm. them before. And I'm That's just thinking, true. wow, of all the posts that I have done in all the years I've been on social media, <laughs> I could really take a hiatus <laughs> and not, not do any actual new posts for the next six right. months just just recycle some of the <laughs> just recycle some of those things because 
repetition is important. You know, some people don't hear you when you say things. And sometimes when you say things, they hear you incorrectly. You know, that's a part of our human flaw. You know, we, oh, sure. we, don't, we hear part they, of it. They just get a piece. Yes. Yeah. And then they fill in the other piece, which may or may right. not be accurate. <laughs> it's like somebody Depends hearing the, the lyrics to a song and then they, they don't hear all the lyrics. So then they fill in with lyrics <laughs> that, are, that aren't or, actually or part of... words they actually make up to uh, make oh, it yeah. sound good, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what do you think we should talk about today? Today is episode 20. Man. Well, I'll tell you, the, the thing that's been on the sort of social media radar screen this week, there's been a lot of talk about hair color fading. Mm, okay. And, and all these different, and I'm going to use finger quotes, causes, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, well, I think we should, I think we should go there. Well, can I finger quote right now and say, please, all, please. All, all hair color will fade. It's the Sh nature of the very, it's the very nature of the product. Shocking. I mean, it's like expectations versus realities. What yeah. did you expect? You know, I mean, first of all, you know, <laughs> we're changing the structure of a, of a, of a fiber and we're, infusing if you will it's mm -hmm. you know restructuring it with artificial uh, components those components are going to wear out they're gonna yeah. they're gonna fade um i think that sometimes we our expectations of what fading should be and what it shouldn't be mm -hmm. are sometimes beyond reality for example oh. I always tried to position fading as number one, it's going to happen. So when someone says, will my color fade? I go, absolutely it will. But there are certain criteria that will determine how quick your hair color fades versus how quick someone else's hair color fades. You know, one of the most important things is that we need to quantify what acceptable fading is. Mm -hmm. So if you consider the behavior of most people today in society, many, many, many people shampoo every day. You know, when clients say to me, how often should I shampoo your, my hair? I say, how often do you bathe your body? You know I mean? It's like, <laughs> that's kind of a dumb question, you know? So, but most people shampoo on a daily basis or at least every other day. Um, <clears throat> so hair color will fade. So what I, when I quantify acceptable fading, it's when a hair color fades from a half a level to a level in 30 days. Sure. So, I mean, if my clients come back to me and they've only faded a half a level, so there's not much fading at all that they've experienced, that really determines how I'm going to approach the color service that I do on them. Right. If they faded a level... Now I may have to do something on that mid links and those ends, zone two and zone three, if you will. Sure. Mid links sure. to ends to help fortify what's happening there. Right. Now, we have some colors that will fade a half a level to a level in less than 30 days. So the brighter the color is, the less background it has, which goes into our Holy Trinity program. Mm -hmm. So... So when I make a hair color, if I want it to be bright, I have to reduce, reduce the amount of background because background is present in all colors. Right. So by reducing the background, I really emphasize the brightness of the tone. And therefore, I'm really creating more of a hollow type of hair color. Sure. It doesn't and have a lot our, of substance. And for our listeners out there, the easiest way to kind of think about this too is that there's only so much room in a tube of color right so you got you have to remove some of the background in order to increase the amount of tone because just spatially you gotta have enough space for it to live in there right yeah absolutely right so so that is how i quantify it 
acceptable fading, half a level to a level in 30 days, unacceptable fading, half a level to a level sooner than that. Right. But there's criteria that would determine that, right? Sure, sure. You know, like you were just saying earlier about hair texture, right? So why don't you give our listeners a little bit of idea about how hair texture affects that? So think about it, think about it like this, you guys. Most manufacturers' instructions are on medium textured hair. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of 10 though, the, like I don't, I don't know about you, Dennis, but most of my clients either had really fine hair or really coarse hair. There, there wasn't a lot of medium, you know, that unicorn yeah. perfect hair. Right. So, you know, like fine hair is kind of a, a beast in and of itself because number one, it, it tends, yeah, same. It tends to take color quicker. Mm-hmm. And, and initially, a lot of times it can even come out a little deeper than expected. But by the same token, because there's not a lot of physical space in that fine hair, because fine hair, we could say, is skinny. Mm-hmm. Um, it also tends to let go right. of, of color a little quicker than coarse hair. Whereas coarse hair, there's there's lots of room Mm -hmm. but then with coarse hair you know certain exceptions need to be made because there's so many more layers of cuticle you know to really it's it's a little more difficult to drive color inside of it Mm -hmm. so you know all of these can can have a different sort of end result you know when it comes to the world of fading and then on top of it, you know, we, as we've discussed before, hair responds to pH. So what you're putting on your hair also is going to have an effect on, you know, your, your end result. If you're not using, you know, products that are pH balanced or have like a really high pH, like there's some clarifying shampoos out there on the market that right. have a pH of like 9.5 to 10. I mean, that's basically the same pH as, you know, permanent hair color. It's going yeah. to right. swell the hair fiber and give you more of an opportunity to, you know, lose some of that color right. out of yeah. the hair. Yeah, I can, I, I can tell you before I understood hair color, when I would color my hair, it would take deeper. Mm-hmm. And I would say, well, then it must be the peroxide. Right. So then I would change it and I would, instead of using 20 volume, I use 10 volume, right? Right. Because right. finger quote, 10 volume gives you more deposit or gives right. you, you know, <laughs> all of that. And then it lasted even less time. Right. Because what they didn't finger quote for me was that 10 volume has less oxygen to release. Therefore, you get less dye development. You get a dye development, but you don't maximize your dye development because you have less oxygen to work with. That's right. And we have a series of posts with videos coming up that actually show you in increments of minutes, you know, lift and dye development. We're really excited about putting those out um, so that you can totally underdevelop a dye and you can get to a point where you overdevelop it and start to just burn it up, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And I think the visual like that is going to be really um, powerful because, again, we look at things from the outside, really. We're not, we're not thinking about what's happening on the inside. Right. And so that's why we come up with all of these assumptions and, you know, ideas, our own opinions about what we think is happening in the hair. So <clears throat> texture of hair is very, very important. I know with my fine hair clients, if they want to be bright, you know, they want to be really extremely bright. I know they're going to have to come in more than once a month. Yeah. They're going to have to come in twice a month because we got to pump them up sometime in the middle of that, of that visit. So that, or they have to have home care. Sometimes they have to have both. They have to be using a color supportive shampoo at home exactly, along with coming back in to get pumped up. Again, so they keep their color looking very, very bright. Because 
our buddy, your friend and mine, Leland Hirsch, used to teach what's not putting color into the hair is taking it out. Right. So even back in the day, fading is a natural part of the process. Right. It's just what we as professionals consider acceptable fading versus unacceptable fading. Yeah. And we blame yeah. all kinds of things for it. And, and <laughs> yeah. I, and I would agree for that, ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I would agree that they they play some role in that, but they're not the culprit, right? You know, I mean, um, for example, right? Uh, this last one they said water will cause your hair. To uh. Okay, so that's a big deal, right? I mean, they're all putting it all over social media. Water will cause your hair to fade, so don't you know? Don't wash your hair ever ever and i just thought well no that's really that's really only half the story you know will water swell the hair yes okay uh the dyes are water soluble so could water break down some of the color yes but remember we also put shampoo <laughs> on our hair with water and if i'm putting a low ph shampoo I'm not using something that's really harsh. And, you know, it's really funny as I've been playing with this. And so can I kind of show you what I've done? Please. Okay. So, so here's water. Okay. Clear. And I'm going to take some pH drops. You can buy these on Amazon. I don't work for Amazon, so I don't get a commission. But if you did, but if I did, and so I'm going to squirt the pH drops gently and inject the pH drops into the water. And you can see the water has changed color. Okay. And um, on now the this, little scale, what does that, what pH does that okay. represent the blue? So now this is faucet water, right? Came right out of the faucet. It is 8.0 pH. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of that's how it is here from the tap too. All right. So so this is the water. So will it swell the hair? Yes, it will. A little bit. But if I'm using a shampoo that has a pH of 3.5 to 4.5, and uh, I don't have a shampoo with me, but I do have an acidifying rinse, 3.5 to 4.5. I don't think you guys can see that very well. Yeah, it's a little, but. I can attest to the Formula 18 leave-in. Yeah. So I'm going to take this, okay, and I'm going to pour it into the solution. And once I pour it into the solution, I'm going to stir it around. And now mm. we brought it down to a pH of 5. Nice. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't the power of the pencil stirrer. Yeah, it could have been the lead in the pencil. I don't know. <laughs> but here's my point. Water is a universal solvent. So if you shampoo with water, who does that? Right. Then you have a problem. You also need to stay out of the freaking rain. Because that'll cause your hair to fade, I guess, right? Right? <laughs> I'm just asking, right? <laughs> I mean, if you know? you're solely using water. Yeah. So, and you can't perspire because right. the salt in your perspiration is, it's higher in alkalinity. It's as high as the water is. Right. So the salt could cause your hair color to fade too. In any case. If you're using an acid-based shampoo, that makes that whole water story a moot point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so crazy how we latch on to these things and we try to use them as the reason. Here is the way to counteract all of those things that are the enemy to hair color. Understand hair color. Understand what happens when hair color fades. Well, and like, understand what fading really is. Yes. And what comes before fading. Right. You know? 
Well, I just happen to have my little whiteboard here. All right. <laughs> and so, if you will forgive my rudimental drawing skills, I will draw what I, how I would describe. Can I do a little narration while you're doing that, Dennis? Sure. So, so before you basically, when you what you have in the tube are what are called dye precursors, which means that these are all things that happen before a dye molecule is formed. And dye precursors, there's three of them typically. There are dye intermediates, couplers, and modifiers. So in any given tube or bottle of color, you have at least two of those three, sometimes all three in different you know, formulations because that's what creates the array of colors that we see. Right. So those things exist as three separate entities in the tube or a bottle of color and don't become a dye molecule. So like a completed dye molecule until they interact with the hydrogen peroxide. Hence the name developer, it develops these into a molecule. So it's kind of like they're babies and then they go through puberty and they develop into an adult. Right, like they have no arms. <laughs> right. And then once they get inside, they kind of mix together like that. And they, 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 they connect. Yeah, and there's and different forms. Bigger, yes. Right, so uh, if, depending on the color you're creating, depending on the combination of dyes you have, there's different forms. So, right. so these are what you would call couplers. You know, they're connecting the line. Now, as you expose the hair to shampooing, especially if you're using an anionic shampoo, you can Google the word. Anionic means it pulls away. Okay, you can find cationic shampoos, which will not, okay, they will not break down the color quite as quickly right. because they are more, they attach to the hair. So once one of these couplers is broken like this, that molecule, whatever color that was, begins to look lighter mm -hmm. because as light reflects off of it, now you've changed the shape. Remember, all objects... Molecules are objects. Mm -hmm. All objects, their color is determined by their size, their shape, and their chemical structure. So once I remove or I break down one of the couplers in that dye molecule, that is no longer the same color. So I start to see a different color because the light reflection, it reflects back to our eye and it takes it sometimes outside the visible spectrum where we can't see it. Right. Okay. And then if I have another one that breaks down over a period of time or a few abuse, it even changes color even lighter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so these will continually do that. You could now, you, you could actually be like, like, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four. Right. And each each week it's getting a little different because the couplers are you know, slowly breaking down. Exactly. And, and, and this can just also be do, I mean, you can be using a color safe shampoo, but even just exposure to right. being outside all right. has an influence on this. So, you know, it's like any client that comes in and says, I don't want my hair color to fade. You, you need to have like a fierce conversation with them and let them know that that is a physical impossibility because right. this is the nature of what we're dealing with. Right. If anybody saw the big board that I posted, it's on my Instagram page and I posted it on Facebook the other day uh, about the sun, the UVA light, light from the sun disrupts the chem chemical structure that hold those dye intermediates together right. and it will actually fade the color and one of the examples I used 
how many of you've ever taken a, a shirt or a blouse or something and laid it out in the sunlight and after exposure to sunlight over and over again those dyes even in clothing those dyes begin to fade because those uva rays penetrate the fabric and they right. disrupt that chemical connection sure. so so that's what color fading is it's not the color falling out of the hair no because i mean because people believe that that the color washed away and it really and there's still some structure left when they come back for a retouch there's still some color in that hair right so that's where when you talk about doing a retouch and a refresh that's where how you behave over that is very important for example if you're using permanent color alkaline pH 9.5 to 10 and you apply to the scalp area which is new growth and then you bring it through the ends remember the and back in the day you'd spray the ends with water and then you'd push the color through mm -hmm. right what are you doing you're pulling that alkalinity over hair that has already been previously tinted and that color formula remember has background still in it and so you would completely do that over and over again. And eventually the mid links and the ends would be darker than your scalp area. And you sure. would go, what happened? Because you were pulling color over, you were continually adding to it. Now today, right. most people refresh the mid links and the ends using a color that is more forgiving, that is slightly lower in pH. And it is basically, and I don't call it a deposit only color. It's basically lower in pH and it's not going to have that kind of buildup as long as you're not matching. That's where many right. people, their behavior runs bad is because if I use the six on the scalp, I want to use a six on the mid links in the end. Why would you do that? If it only faded to half a level, you don't need another six. <laughs> right. right. All you yeah. want to do is replace the reflect. You can, you know, like slightly lighter, slightly warmer Yeah. for your refresh. Because, you know, whether, whether you're deepening previously colored hair or even uh, natural hair, you know, a color on top of a color when there's no lightning present is just going to create a deeper color. Right. If you're staying, if you're staying at the same level or deeper. Right. You know, so you, you know, you want to kind of, just go a little bit lighter, a little bit warmer to make up for that. Because the other part too is that that hair that is, you know, in zone two and three has seen more action than the hair at the scalp. So we it's used already to say that's the old neighborhood in the city. <laughs> right. Right. So it's like, you know, it it's gonna take the color a little bit deeper and a little bit drabber. Yeah. Just because of the nature of how the fabric is a little more beat up right you know on the mids and ends than the fabric at the scalp so you know you want to compensate for that right right so i think the point is making fading something that is not to be feared but something is to be expected but you can manage it yeah 100 you know? and you can manage it between salon visits you know mm -hmm. um like i said with fine hair clients i always send them home with a color shampoo to support whatever color I create. Now, think about what a color shampoo is. <laughs> it's simply direct dyes yeah. in a shampoo base. You say, well, my manufacturer doesn't make color shampoo. Yeah, they do. They just don't know that. Right. If you have a shampoo that, here's the thing, you hear us talking about pH. And, and here's what I want you to understand is that pH balance doesn't really mean anything. It's a very general term because it's how it's pH balance that makes it important. For example, a lot of uh, manufacturers use simply water as part of the base of mostly all their hair care formulas. Well, if they're not using deionized water, right. the water will continue to follow through with its normal behavior, which is called ionization. And ionization is where a water molecule will 
steal, H2O, will steal one of the hydrogen molecules from another water molecule. And, when it, and that's just the natural behavior of water. And when it does that, one that lost that hydrogen molecule becomes a hydroxide. So its pH increases. Right. The one who stole it, that pH lowers. So the, the pH is fluctuate, fluctuating in the product. And that is why over a period of time, manufacturers who do not use deionized water in their formulation, the pH of your shampoo could change. It could move up the scale, meaning that <clears throat> it becomes more alkaline, it's not stabilized. So that's why pH is important in the process about what kind of water that they're using. Sure. You know, so, um, so keep that in mind. If, if as long as I am using a nice pH balanced shampoo, low acidic, low acidic level, I'm going to, that water is going to take on the pH of that product that I'm using on the hair. And there's not really going to be that big of an issue with water. Yeah. Okay. Now there's a rumor out there about heat, right? <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> and, and heat, excessive heat, will break down dye molecules. You've probably done it. You may have. I mean, I have. excessive heat will break down the hair. Right. But... <clears throat> you know, we, we were talking earlier about this. And back in the day, when we had curling irons, didn't have flat irons. We had curling irons. There was one flat iron, but basically curling iron was a tool that we used. Mm -hmm. There were certain skills to working with a curling iron. Okay. First of all, we all used the Marcel grip, which is the one that every one of you hated when you started to learn the curling iron. That's why most our hairdressers say use the, the thumb clip curling iron. Mm -hmm. But we knew that based upon the texture of hair that we were working with, there were three things when I used a hot tool, like an iron on the hair that I had to keep in mind. One was the heat, the temperature. Two was the pressure. That means on the sleeve, on the barrel, was it even pressure based on the texture of the hair. And three, it was timing. How long did the hot tool stay in the hair? So we know this. When I'm working on fine hair, especially with a flat iron, when I'm working on fine hair, when I grasp my flat iron, I do not grasp it on the handle. I grasp it closer to the nose of the flat iron. Why? Because I want to make sure that I have good compression. Remember, a finer texture of hair, you're going to have a little bit more cuticle layer and you want to make sure that that cuticle layer lays compact. So I'm going to, and it's also a smaller core, like it's what uh, Max was saying. We have to make sure that we have enough compression to actually smooth out those cuticle layers. So I grab it closer to the nose. Okay. I hold the compression. I set it at the right heat. And then I count. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. That is how long I hold that iron in the hair. Think about this. This week, when you go to the salon, look at people who are using the flat iron. And you're going to see they're doing one pass, two pass, three passes, four fast, passes through the fast hair. Passes fast passes, too. And what they're doing is they're teaching the consumer that you do one pass, two pass, three pass, four pass, five passes. Instead of saying <coughs> it's compression, it's timing, and it's heat. We know that at 289 degrees, most hair will curl. If you leave the rod in the hair long enough. But again, it's like 40 volume and bleach. We want hot we don't see we don't even right. need a temperature gauge on our irons we need off an off switch and hot yeah because we want it as hot as possible now funny thing is hair water boils at 212 degrees 
that, that's a fact. So if I take a hot tool and there's still right. moisture in that hair, we know at what, 300 degrees, right, Max, that we're driving out the, the moisture out of the hair. Correct. Anything after that, there's no moisture Oof. left in that hair. So how do you expect a curl? Well, you know, if I'm using my flat iron to make a big beach wave, how do you expect that curl to be long lasting? Exactly. And then just to take that temperature fact even further, 320 to 347, you actually begin melting the protein in the hair. Yeah. And 419 to 455, you can create irreversible damage. Exactly. So literally. So, low and slow, like we talk about with hair color, with lighteners, you know, low volume, longer development time, that actually does also holds true for temperatures of heat implements. Oh, yes. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, lower temperature, a little longer on the hair, you probably get a much better result. Right. And then people will say, well, why didn't they teach us that? Well, because you wanted more heat. And that's what the manufacturers gave you. They kept giving you more. They had to change to ceramic blades because the hair was sticking to the blade. That's right. kind of a, a sign <laughs> when you're using a hot tool and you're, it's getting brown marks on it, it's a, it's a sign that you're using it on the wrong product. You know, that, you know, I always use thermal insulator on the hair. I use a thermal insulator that actually is a thermal insulator. Remember that even silicone in a product will only protect the hair up to 400 degrees. That's it. Right. At 400 degrees, silicone, dimethicone will melt. It's like throwing oil in a hot pan. Right. Right. Or butter. So, so it's not that you don't want to use heat on the hair. It's that you have to use measured heat. Use measured heat on the hair. That, that is what my recommendation would be. So all of these things can contribute, but there's no one culprit. Okay. And it could be just your client's poor behavior. Yeah. You know, I, I have a client <laughs> and she loves to play golf and she's a redhead. And I told her, I said, if you're going to be out on the golf course all the time. You need to wear a hat to keep your color from fading. You know what her idea of a hat is, Max? A visor. A visor. And she's got her little red hair sticking up on the yeah. top of her head. And that's what she calls oh, a hat. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, these are the things that contribute to fading, but there's no one, no one culprit. We, right. we have to think about all of them. And you have to think about your client's behaviors. I, I always think about their behavior. I, I want to know how do you take care of it at home? Some clients have poor behavior. Some clients, you know, look, when they come get home and they're going out at night, they don't shampoo their hair. They don't put on a thermal spray. Right. They take a hot iron and go right over the top of the hairspray that's on their hair. Now, some hairsprays have sugar in them. It's part of the makeup of the spray because it helps it as a fixative. Well, so sugar with a hot iron will turn brown. So if your tools are turning brown <clears throat> because you're using them on your clients, that's an indicator that something's not right. Right. Wasn't it like caramelizing it basically? <laughs> that's right. Creme brulee on right. a hot iron. <laughs> Didn't know we were going into cooking. Yeah. Well, uh, life really is a lot like cooking. <laughs> and, and I'll just leave that there for another time and another conversation. But exactly. life, that's a finger quote. Life is a right. lot like cooking. <laughs> well, Max, we've covered a lot of information today. Yes, we have. And uh, it's been fun. Every time. Uh, every time. Listen, if you're watching us on YouTube, <clears throat> thank you so much for um, subscribing. And you can subscribe if you don't subscribe to us. You can subscribe right down here below. And um, 
You'll get notified every time we uh, drop a new a new episode on YouTube. We thank you for following us, and uh, we hope that you're finding our information meaningful. Our goal as a company is to help you become more empowered. Uh, one of our mantras is to help you discover your own personal genius. So we thank you for that. Remember, you can follow Max and I on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And <clears throat> follow us on Facebook if you would like as well. If you want to join our private forum, it's called Guru Hair Tribe. All you need to do is go in and request to be admitted into the tribe, answer two questions. We ask you to make sure that you are a professional. So we ask you for your license and we ask you where, what state are you licensed in? I, and we, no, we ask you, do you agree to our terms? Our, and we have our regulations and rules posted there. So all you have to do is fill those out and one of our monitors will get to you put into the group. Uh, Hair, hair tribe people, you know, they get a lot of a uh, few extra perks that we offer. So we offer that to you. We also want you to uh, join us on our uh, website at www.gurunation.net and take a look at our educational page. <clears throat> Max and I have some great classes coming up here. Uh, our next one is July. We're doing July. Is that right, Max? Is it July 13th? I think so. Just double check. I thought we have two on the book, actually. Uh, we have we have one on June thirteenth. June thirteenth. Thank you very much. And then and then another delete it in July. In July. And July twenty sixth. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. So um, go on our website. Take a look at those classes. We'd love to have you join us on a live class where we can actually interact with you. Um, because it's episode 20, probably, I, I think next uh, the next one we do, Max, I'd like to try to do a live one. Let's do a live one here on right. YouTube and see that if we can great. get some people involved with us. So it's been great fun. I uh, hope you all are having a great weekend. And oh, oh okay, Max, our I'm ride here, is I'm here, ride. my friend. <clears throat> Listen, we wish you all the best. And always, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you, brother? See you guys later. I'm out. Have a See great you later. rest of your day. Have a great Bye. weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.